Hi there folks, welcome back to the Evan Andy Fishing channel and look who it is. Hi, I am alive. I'm not a pretend Andy's girlfriend, I actually exist. Hi Pete, where have you been? I've been working really hard and on the weekends it kind of rained every single time it's since been, about August. It's been real rainy, hasn't it? Yeah, very, very rainy. I think it's in most of the UK. It's been one of the worst kind of autumn winters I can remember for a long time in terms of the amount of rainfall has made it really, really hard for us to get out and film any fishing stuff particularly. So we are working on it and the times I have been, uh, I've struggled. Actually, I caught a fish the other day, didn't I? Yeah, I caught my yeah, first pike yeah. in ages. In fact, I've got the footage of that, so we're going to roll that very quickly just to prove to the world that I can catch a pike, even if it's a real small one. Oh, follow, follow, go on, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Right below me. Oh, dang it. Okay, well, that's something at least. Hopefully that showed up on the camera. Let's get that back out there, see if we can get him to take it. Follow again, same fish. Right, my feeling is he's not gonna take that look. Very quickly put that jerk bait back on. Right, jerk bait time. Let's see if he'll eat this one. Oh, fish, there he is. There he is. He ate that one. He ate that one. Uh, don't think it's the same fish, actually. It's a much smaller fish. The one before wasn't huge, but this one's definitely smaller than that. I can't see it being an issue. Oh my goodness, I've actually got a pike in the net. I never thought that was going to happen again. Don't adjust your sets, folks. That is me holding a pike. And I was starting to wonder if that was ever going to happen again. <laughs> it's probably the smallest pike the channel's ever seen, but it is a pike. A venue I've not fished in ages. Let's get him back. Done the hard work. Back he goes. Nice. So yeah, that was the only fish of the day. I couldn't make a vlog out of that. It'd have been pretty no, freaking boring, yeah. wouldn't it? Uh, what's not boring is that we've had a little bit of a milestone, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, we reached 5,000 subscribers. So thank you so much to everyone. Hello to the new people that have joined our little channel. Yeah, really, really excited to reach 5,000. We should have got some party poppers or something <laughs> to kind of make this a bit more exciting. Hat for Seco. Oh God, it's going to be one of those vlogs, is it? <laughs> so as part of the kind of celebration or whatever it is to, to celebrate 5,000 subs, we reached out to you guys and said, if you've got any questions you'd like to ask IB and I to drop it on the community tab and we'll go through the questions and we'll try and answer them as best they can. And we, we had quite a few questions in yeah, the end, didn't we? Yeah. We did all right. 42 questions, so, in fact. I think what we need to do is crack on and work through that question list kind of one by one, don't we? Yeah. Let's see if we can get through them all. Yep. Uh, stay tuned with me, folks, because it's English and it's difficult for me. So, first question is from Colum Braniff. Yep. Uh, what's your most versatile pike lure and your most versatile perch lure? Well, I saw that question and I knew the answer straight away. It's a bit of a vague answer. Mine would be um, shads and shads. Yep. Because yep. <laughs> yep. you can fish them anywhere in the water column and you get loads of different colours and uh, vibration and it's a soft plastic. And, you see, for me, it would be even more specific. I could just go rack shad. <laughs> yeah, you like that rack shad. Because it can float, you can make it sink, and it's very beautiful, and it stretches, and it's eco-friendly. Yeah, I think that's a fair shout. We'll drop a link in the description to some of the rack shad so you guys can have a look at them. But but just shads in general. Yeah. If you could just go predator fishing with one type of bait, it would probably be a shad, wouldn't it? And you can put a spinner blade on it as yeah, well. Yeah, little if you spinner blades to. on them. You rig them weedless, jig heads, screwing weights, stingers. Uh, sky's the limit with shads. If you're only going to take one type of lure out for your pike and your yeah. perches and the fishing, take shads because they catch all the time everywhere. You can fish them however you want. You can fish it slow. You can make it. Re you can wind really fast in. You can just use the paddle tail. You can basically you can do whatever you, you want. You can do whatever yeah. you want. I think that's a good question. Uh, second question is from, oh, I'm not sure how to say that, uh, Ziga, Ziga. Ziga, yeah, Ziga. it looks like that. Uh, will you go back to Slovenia? Uh, Absolutely. Yes, is is the definite answer, yes. We're not sure when. 
hopefully as soon as possible. Um, we might have something else coming up this summer. We're, yeah. de we're definitely looking at having another trip abroad because you guys, we got loads of good feedback from the yeah. Slovenia trip, didn't we? Uh, if you haven't watched the vlogs from the Slovenia trip, again, I'll drop a link in the description below to see playlists. There's, uh, there's seven videos in there. I can't wait to go back. Let's yeah, put it this way. We'll, we'll go, but that was my seventh, eighth trip. Yours, yeah. For yeah. me, it was the first time. And to be honest, I said it last time and I will say it again. If Brexit kicks me out, that's where I'm going to go and live. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, think we, I think we pretty much agreed on that. Um, whether or not we'll go back this summer, I'm not sure. As I say, we've got a second plan that I don't want to say too much about because we haven't got it all kind of yeah. finalised yet. But if that comes off, it'll be really, really cool. It'll be somewhere different, still in Europe, super accessible, and but it looks do, beautiful. We do really miss Orosh. Yeah, big Merry shout Christmas out to Orosh and, and all the guys in Slovenia. Yeah. Merry Christmas to all you Slovenian people. That's a good question. Uh, next one, Amber Rose Newhouse. Uh, winter perch fishing, favourite baits and tips for the winter? Uh, well, given my recent record with winter <laughs> perch fishing, you've probably <laughs> asked the wrong per person. I'd be, any tips? No, I haven't been out at all this winter. Well, yeah, well, that's kind of the problem is that is that it's we haven't been able to get on the bigger rivers at all, and that's where the majority of our perch fishing is. A lot of the still waters have been blown out. It's just time. I really do believe that if you can find big perch, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot myself in the face saying this. If you can find big perch, they're generally not that hard to catch. But the, the hard bit is finding finding them, yeah. them in your specific water can be can be really, really difficult. Obviously, there's fewer big perch than there are small perch. So just keep grinding. Keep keep trying yeah. to find them. If you can find them and the conditions right, you'll catch them. I think the likelihood is, as long as you have the bait in the water, you will have more chance of catching. Fish, Absolutely though. agree with that. Just keep fishing. Oh, Richard Corbett. I hope I said that right. Uh, what would you? What would be your dream fish species to catch on the fly or lure? Well, go on, Andy. Okay. Well, I'm I'm quite lucky in that I have actually already caught my dream fish on a fly, which was a permit. I read about permit for years and the kind of <laughs> going mythical fish that's super hard to catch, and and I I caught them. Um, when I was out in Seychelles on, on a day, actually, we had a, a guide's day on uh, Poire Vatel, uh, and I was the only person to catch one that day, which I was super proud of. Um, so I think probably second on the list is Golden Dorado. Those things, have, they're, they're in there. I really want to go and do that Bolivian Golden Dorado small water thing. It looks absolutely amazing. What a beautiful fish. You dream really big. I dream really big. <laughs> yeah, how about you? A salmon. Oh, really yeah, want to good catch shout. salmon. Uh, and I would love to go back home and catch a burbot. Doing ah. some winter fishing and catching a burbot. That would be on one of the top. That's an interesting things. fish because we both like using the burbot lures. Burbot lures, yeah. It's just that there's, I think, burbot went extent in the UK like quite a long while back now. So it would be really cool to actually catch a burbot. I think they're super beautiful. So and those are two fish. And salmon, I've never even fished salmon. I asked Andy so many times. So if you could <laughs> tell him off in the comments, that would be very much appreciated because he's not taking me for salmon fishing still. Well, kind of the reason we haven't been is because it's such a it's such a low percentage fish. I mean, there's no way of hiding it. The UK salmon population is declining. declining yeah. It's as simple as that. There are some rivers where it's still pretty good. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking specifically maybe the Tyne or even some of the some chalk streams seem to have... Uh, maybe slightly increasing populations. But generally, overall, in the UK, that salmon population so, isn't great. Saying that, if anyone wants to invite me salmon fishing, please do. Somebody take IB salmon fishing. You need to get this one off your back, don't you? I it's really want a salmon. A That's a cool question. That I was promise question. I will not kill it or eat it. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> uh, e. Key Angler. Uh, you should do a live stream Q&A rather than a video Q&A. The reason why we can't do a live stream Q&A is because my English is awful sometimes. And I will just say stupid things on camera or swear. So Andy needs to be able to Yeah, I need to be able to edit the naughty words out, unfortunately. Yeah, so that's my fault. The other thing is I haven't quite figured out how to set up the dummy battery with the camera and stuff like that because the camera could only run yeah, for a certain true, amount of time. True. So there's all kinds of... We are thinking of doing some live streams, yeah. either that be Facebook or Instagram or on even on YouTube. So perhaps I think we were thinking of me doing like a... Um, flying a tie like for a first time and Andy talking me through how to do it and just having some fun really. We did have a conversation about that as well actually kind of maybe once every fortnight or once a month do a live stream with a real topical live stream? A live stream yeah <laughs> I'm in Derbyshire I'm surrounded by limestone streams I've also got a little bit of a cold so I apologise um, 
like a real topical issue, like probably once a fortnight or once a month, a, a live stream where we get everyone involved and talk about like the close season. The controversial or stuff. Barb versus Barbless or holding fish out. The stuff that comes up on social media all the time that people get yeah. cranky about. If you'd be interested in getting involved in that, drop us a comment in the comment section because below and let us know. We would be keen on doing that. I think that'd be I'm really all fun. down for controversial stuff. Friday so. night, couple of drinks and let's, yeah. let's get all the dirty laundry yeah. out in public. Let's talk about this stuff because it's important. And if it's a live stream, you guys can get involved in the comment section as well. So I think that's a really cool idea. Yeah. I need to work out the text on that, don't I? Yep. Um, another one from Eki Angler. Uh, would you ever do a video on lure fishing or bait fishing on the rivers for brown trout when the season opens back up in March? <laughs> Interesting. Andy almost went down that route earlier this year, didn't you, where the trout season was opened. You you said, oh, should I do... Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so trout. And in fairness, there is footage, and you can insert a clip here of Andy catching a wild, beautiful brownie on a dirty spinner. Well, I had two or three that day, didn't I? I actually stopped using the spinner because it kept <sighs> catching trout. So, so the reason I haven't done that, and I want to say straight away, I have, I'm, I don't mind how people fish. I've got no no problem with that. anyone fishing however they want. The reason I haven't done it is, I'll be perfectly honest, fishing for trout on lures just does nothing for me at all. It, it, it just, it's never, it's never really grabbed me. I've, anytime I've caught a trout on a lure, my first thought has always been, oh, that would have been great on a fly. And I just haven't, it's never really gripped me. But if there's loads of demand for it, yeah, why not? Let's, let's, we've got a couple of little rivers locally that have got a few in. So. I will take no participation in that. I can be the well, well, yeah, this is the other problem. It just, <laughs> it just doesn't do it for either of us, does it really? No. I think it's because as well... Like, if you have a chance, if I would have a chance or an option to do fly fishing or lure fishing, I would go fly fishing. Well, we both agreed on that, particularly for trout, I think. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, maybe something in the future, but if there's trout there, I want to catch them on flies. I think bait fishing, like trotting on the river, that would be quite fun because I've never done it. We've talked about that, haven't so. we? That might be coming up this winter, actually. Yeah. That would be nice. Um, not, spe not specifically, specifically for trout, but yeah. Keep an eye out. There might be some more bait fishing coming up because I'm struggling to catch on anything else. <laughs> um, okay, another one from Josh Tyrant. I've been fishing three years. I never caught a pike, only carp. What is your best tip for lures in a fast river? In fast rivers. Do you want me to go on that one? Yeah, go on. Okay, so... so Spinner bait. <laughs> so fast rivers, um, pike don't like to sit and hunt in real fast water. You will find them there every now and again, but it's not their favourite. So if you've got a fast river, find a big deep bend where it slows down or find a weir pool or look for the edges or maybe undercut banks and stuff like that. I remember actually Rich Chapman about this time last year actually caught a pike from a really fast stretch of water. He'd actually given up on the retrieve and was just cranking it back to go and move somewhere else because he realised that the water was too fast to fish. And as it was coming right up the edge, he got that hit and he actually yeah, caught a yeah, fish in a yeah. really fast piece of water. So edges always because the water's generally a bit slower down the edge. Uh, weir pools and stuff like that around bridges if the water slows down or if you've got any back eddies target the areas where it's slowed down and if you can find that slower water the chances are you'll find some pike and perch uh, Joe Bosher what are your goals for your channel in 2020 and have you got any countries you will be visiting? <laughs> well, Ooh, <laughs> well we kind of already <laughs> answered the second part that, well we haven't but because we, haven't. we can't but yes yes, we have got a specific, specific country, country we'd really like to go to uh, in Europe. We tried to do it last year but yeah, it didn't work out. Couldn't quite work out. So hopefully this year we do get to go there and it will be amazing if we get to go there. In terms of goals for the channel we haven't really set any goals? Uh, well, we? we kind of have because we keep saying, honestly, every day we're gonna go, we need to do more lure fishing, we need to film more lure fishing, but it's not for the lack of trying. Like, you've been out so many times now, but all the waters around us mainly are for fly fishing. So, if you drive somewhere and where you are able to drive, where you are like in your club waters, the river flows in and out. And with all the rain that we had recently, all the waters are kind yeah. of, yeah, yeah. So, it's not just be, yeah, yeah, just to kind of expand on that a little bit. So I'm not in many clubs around here, and the clubs that I am in, um, most of the still waters are connected to, or are in the Trent Valley, and more often not connected to the River Trent, the gravel pits. So at a time when the river's in real big flood, which is basically the last three months, the still waters are, are pretty knackered as well. So I've been stuck to either fish in the canal, which has been rock hard. I've really struggled on the canal, I've had a couple of goes. Uh, fishing dirty water in the uh, gravel pits, or going to have having to go and fish somewhere where I didn't really want yeah. to go. The other thing I tried was me and uh, Robbie went to Grafham. Robbie Northman, he's been on the channel before, he's one of our best mates. 
um, Robbie had been having like 40, 50, 60 fish days on Grafham. So he said, why don't you come film something down there with me? Said, yeah, great idea. Uh, we landed four fish all day and two of them were hooked in the book. So <laughs> that didn't go very well either. So, no. so I think, yeah, goal for next year, try and get a little bit more lure fishing in. If I was going to set a loose goal for the channel, I'd like us to be able to upload a video a week. Yeah, well, that's what we that's what we set out when we started this channel to do a video a week. And it's been so difficult purely because I will be working Monday to Friday and the only two days that I will get to do is Saturday and Sunday. By that time, most of the guiding you will do, if yeah. they're going to let you, is Saturday, Sunday. So we never actually <laughs> see each other. Yeah, it was a real struggle And when we do see year, each it? other is it's raining or everything's flooded and or there's a storm outside. I can't remember the last weekend when the weather was all right for us both to go fishing because if it was, we would go fishing. The the pattern of weekend rain is just staggering. Yeah. Absolutely, we, we've had we've had weeks in the last couple of months where it's been dry Monday to yeah. Friday, yeah. and then it gets to the weekend and it's horrendous and it's been really consistent. So, I think if I was if I was to set a goal for the next year, it'd be a video a week. Yeah, yeah. We'll try our best, folks. Uh, Ariane uh, Carlson. Uh, what are your personal best pike perch brown trout? Do you want to go on that one first? Uh, my personal best pike. Oh, that would be probably one from the broads. Yeah, that Norfolk. That was a beautiful yeah. fish. That was. Um, was that ninety six? Was it ninety six? Ninety seven. Ninety six. Yeah. Ninety seven. Yeah, uh, that was on one of my favorite lures as well. Uh, biggest perch. Actually, I think my biggest perch. We didn't really wait. Because, oh, you tried to wait, but it was quite dark and we didn't have what to put the perch in, but it was caught on a massive jerkbait on the gravel pit. I was fishing for pike. And then at that point, I think we just started going out. So we just started fishing together and I've never like been, I really wanted pike. I like pike. I was obsessed with pike fishing, mm -hmm. wasn't I? And then when I hooked that perch, I was like, I was so disappointed. I was like, oh, it's not even a pike. It's a perch. And Andy there, as soon as he saw the fish, he started freaking out. He started shouting, running around me, telling me what to do. And I'm like, why are you freaking out? Like, it's a perch, it's not even a bike. I was so disappointed. And then when we got the perch to the bank, I kind of realized why a little bit more because it was a massive Yeah, it was quite perch. an ironic day, that was. You were, you were throwing big jerk baits on a 100-pound yeah. single-strand titanium trace for pike, and I'd been perch fishing all day. Yeah. I hadn't had a touch. And then right at the end of the day, you end up catching... A perch on your outfit and it was a lovely fish as well it was, it was an absolutely fish, cracking yeah. so that that would be your biggest perch i think yeah. so yeah brown trout i th depending on the river like what i think it you had that nice one during the mayfly season this year that was a cracker well i had so many nice ones that's what i'm but that's what i'm trying to get i don't think which one would have been bigger because i, mean, I don't measure my fish and i don't weigh my fish because i don't really care how big it is they were all really big yeah, fish. Yeah, yeah, you had a good maid, didn't yeah. you? But I remember that one particularly when you were with me that you had in a mayfly. I think we got some cool photos The one with the blind it. eye? Uh, well, there was that one as well, actually. I'd forgotten about that. No, we, we didn't vlog this one. We just went Ooh, out for yes, a few yeah, yeah, yeah. I know which we one you mean. Yeah. that one in that inside yeah. edge. Yeah, that might have been my biggest that one. But fish. then I had a few good ones without you when I went fishing you did. the wire as well. But we will insert a few pictures. You guess which one was the biggest one because, honestly, it doesn't you're, really matter to you're me. Had a, you had a good may. What's yours? Pike? Pike, yeah, 31. That was on a That was on a fly, fly. yeah, that was fly caught from a, a secret squirrel, little water in the south. Perch, uh, my biggest perch was a, it was probably one of those fish from Chew, actually. So I'm not, I'm not sure if Chew fish count. If they do, my biggest perch was um, three, six, three, eight, something like that. It's not massive fish by national standards. PB trout, obviously I've got, a, I've got an international PB trout, which was that like fish in New Zealand. Yeah. £9.14. Yeah. PB trout in the UK, actually, we caught on a vlog. On a vlog, yeah. Yep. We'll link that video below. Yep. It's actually called yep. PB yep. trout. Yep. That was, yeah, that was a good fish. But that, that New Zealand fish is, is my... Your personal best. Fish for lifetime, probably so far, yeah. Are you into PBs? Do you measure all your fish? Weigh your, all your fish? I know no, you don't. No, not really. You measure the bigger ones, don't yeah, you? Yeah, occasionally I measure a bigger I've one, never yeah. seen you weigh a fish, though. Don't even carry scales. Yeah. So, Stephen Buckham. Uh, who got you interested in, in fishing and at what age did you start and who do you look up to in the fishing community, for example, friends and professionals? Merry Christmas to you both. Merry Christmas to you, Stephen. Merry well. Christmas to you. Do you want to go first? Uh, you go first. Okay. Um, well, it was it was my dad that got me started. Family always say that at six years old I could cast a fly rod as well as I could walk. I, I had no chance. I was learning to fish from a very young age. Caught my first fish at three, something like that. Um, I was always going to be into fishing in some way. I was just doing, dad was a hunting and fishing guy and I was going down the same path from a very early age. Um, you were spending a lot of times in your pond, local pond, weren't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, so so yeah, the answer to that is probably three or four. In terms of people I look up to, quite a few actually. I mean, we're blessed at the moment. There's a good pool of talented anglers in the UK. In terms of fly angling, for me, it's um, Paul Proctor. Proc is just a machine. I, I'm going to fish with him at some point. It hasn't happened yet. I'm hoping to fish with him at some point. Um, what a fish catcher that guy is. He just catches really big fish um, and seems to do it pretty much on demand these days. He, wherever he goes, he finds a big fish. Um, there's a, a chap in Wales who for the last two years has just been unbelievable, Dale Parsons, a uh, uh, young guy. You annoy me so much every single time I open Facebook. <laughs> He's caught oh, another he's massive, massive trout. Grade. Massive fish. Dale is just unbelievable at the moment. So again, another person I'd really, really like to fish with. And actually, I want to give a big mention to Howard Croston, who has just become the world champion uh, for the Fitz Moosh Fly Fishing Championships. It's been a long time since so we had a UK champion. That is absolutely so well, well done, Howard. Um, so in terms of in terms of the people I look up to in fly fishing, they'd be my three. To be honest, there's quite a few in lure fishing. Um, there's a lot of very very good anglers in the UK, and it's it's quite a young set of anglers as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could go through uh, Robbie. Every time I fish with Robbie, I'm inspired by something that he does. He's just a different kind of mindset. Robbie is. One of the best all around UK anglers, no doubt about no it. No doubt about it. The guy's just he fishes more than he sleeps. Yeah, he's so so. Rob Rob is one of my best mates, but he's also a big inspiration. We always laugh because we have a spare room in our house, which is Andy's office, and we always call it like it's Robbie's room. Robbie's room, yeah, that's <laughs> Robbie's room because he sleeps in there more than I do any work in there. That's for sure. Yeah. How about you? Uh, oh, it's a very different. No, but you didn't. Okay, so I started fishing. Uh, the first time I've ever tried fishing is my sister's boyfriend. He took us out fishing and I was probably no older than like 10. So, and I remember, it was, please don't get offense, offended by this, but I remember I caught the silverfish and I rammed a stick through its throat and I barbecued it. This in Lithuania, let's just, just make that very clear. Let's just make that very clear. That was back home, not in UK, and I ate that fish like a savage. So that was my first experience. I don't even know how I caught that fish, to be honest. I was fishing on a stick. Like, it wasn't even a rod. There was a stick, there was a sweet corn at the end of it, and I caught the fish, and it was, like, best day ever. But then um, you got me properly into fishing, didn't you? Well, yeah, it, it kind of got to a point in the relationship where I had to have the fishing chat, didn't I, and just say, look, this is this is what I do. I'm going to spend a lot of time doing this. And you were like, well, I want to go. But even, like, when we started going fishing and... I, I really wanted to catch a pike and I didn't catch a pike for a long time, even though we, we were trying, we were yeah. going pike fishing and I wasn't catching a pike. Um, but even after like we started catching fish and like do, even a year or two years after you still kept saying, oh, I don't know if you're doing it just because of me or if you actually enjoy doing it. Well, it's, it's one of those things that from my side of things has to be a worry because I don't, I, I didn't want you to just do it because you thought that either I wanted you to do it. I wanted you to do it because you enjoyed it. And there were there were times in that first 18 months where I thought to myself, crikey, if I was you ever, I wouldn't be enjoying this. <laughs> like, <laughs> Purely because we weren't catching anything. Middle of winter on a gravel pit <laughs> and it's sleeting with rain and 40 mile an hour winds and then nothing's happening. And you think to yourself, God, this is dreadful. Like, even I want to go home and I really yeah. like this. So what? But actually, it turned out you were mega into it. And, and in fairness, all of a sudden much better than me. Our life without fishing would be pretty sad. Like, we live fishing. What would we talk about? We literally, we, your job obviously is fishing. Mm -hmm. And, like, our social media is fishing. Our hobby is fishing. Our, like, second job, YouTube, is fishing. Our Christmas tree our Christmas turned Christmas into tree fishing. is my favourite freestylers. <laughs> like, everything is around fishing yeah like and you're kind of really you're kind of making your own path as well now you've done your coaching course you've yeah. got involved with the angling trust and yeah, your aim building yeah. bridges so i am a volunteer bailer for angling trust and i'm also one of the team on building bridges so it's... in fact we ought to link both of those in yeah the description we will link both logs, of those two really really important organizations. and now i've done my level one coaching as well so i'm a qualified coach you are level two qualified coach mm -hmm. I'm going to be looking into doing a level two as well, um, hopefully soon in the new year. And then we will try and make something more out of it. Because yeah. Andy does quite a bit of open days teaching, especially kids or adults, really. Um, anyone fishing and introducing into the sport. So I kind of want to do the same and help out a little bit. So I just needed to do my 
level one so I would be able to so hopefully more on that next year and the people who I look up to is I could name a lot of people and I could start naming everyone and there's a lot of inspiring people on social media especially but I think it's you Aww. I know it's gonna sound really lame but that's like... just cost me a few more Christmas presents hasn't it <laughs> Yeah, you're like, you are genuinely, like, it, I'm not saying that just because you're my boyfriend and I live with you and I have to say it, like, you're genuinely really inspiring. You do a lot of different fishing, you are very, very good and you don't have to be all about social media, like, you will go and do an open day and work your ass off for 10 hours teaching little kids and have patience to do it and you're not going to even talk about it. So you don't do it for the fame or the glory and just do it and you will help all these people in the background and I think that's really nice thanks Andy need more people are like that and that's the nicest thing yeah. I will say about yeah, Andy let's, they, let's, let's get out of the way let's move along you knob um, oi <laughs> Jim Jobs can you touch on the subject of split shot and how much and where to place it it's a in the it's a general question but so many people could benefit from okay, it okay so yeah another question I did notice actually I'm assuming that Jim is specifically here talking about um, fly fishing it's not something we do a lot of in the UK. In America, um, rather than using weighted flies, the culture has always been to put some split shot on the tippet. So it's a bit different over here. In fact, the only time I use split shot, and I'm actually starting to do it more and more and more, it, it doesn't go very well with the kind of traditional fly fishing set. But these days, more and more, if I'm fishing the French leader on a three fly rig, my point fly is becoming a split shot because it rolls along the bottom better, it doesn't get caught up, and if it does get caught up, it costs you a 20 pleat split shot rather than a fly that you might spend 10 minutes tying. Or three hours in my case. Yeah, so I don't use split shot on a rig at any other point when I'm fly fishing, other than that. Uh, if, if I was gonna have to use a split shot on the leader, I would just tie a heavy tungsten bead on the fly. I've never used split shot on the okay. tippet. So for the question on where you would place it, uh, well, always, always uh, on the French lead, it would always be the point fly because that's the one that's going to be on the deck. That's the one that's going to be rolling along the bottom. Uh, it'll stay out of snags a little bit better. Obviously, there's no hook to get caught up. And if it does get snagged up, generally your tippet will just pull through the split on the split shot. You pinch your new one on and away you go. Uh, Alex Bacon, I really enjoyed your two-party or nymphing videos. Would you consider doing something similar for upstream dry fly fishing from looking at leader setup to technique? Oh, first off, thank you very much. That's very kind. Uh, yes. Yeah, we've talked about this. I'd say, in fact, this is probably an unofficial goal is to do a little bit more of the kind of tutorial yeah. instructional yeah. stuff. Um, it, it's a little bit more complex to film. It takes a little bit more time. It definitely takes a bit more time to edit. But the response from you guys to the you're two part, an you're an infant vlog was amazing. Thank you so much for all the nice comments about that. Yeah. Everyone I, like kept saying, oh, this is, the, I watched so many and this is the best one. Yeah, this is the best that, that was, one. So. We had a lot of big smiley face yeah, about that one, really didn't nice. we? So you never really know when you've made these things and uh, whether it's going to go well. And obviously everyone does these things slightly differently and that came up in the comments section. People say, well, I, I do this differently and that differently. Yeah. And there's no right or wrong really about that. It's such a versatile technique. Uh, the answer is yes, I think is, is the short answer. We definitely answer. do Yes, more, we will yeah. be doing more instructional yeah. stuff going forward. I will try to forwards. do more as well. but That would be nice. So we will see. It shows how it's done, Ivy. Um, bad company commented more fly tying. Yeah, working on that. Don't worry about it. Just need to get my lighting set up ready because the last one I did, the Duracell. Yep. Uh, I wasn't thrilled with the lighting on that. I'd like to just get it a little bit better. Honestly, if you have to live with Andy when he's filming these things, <laughs> he has to be perfectionist. Even now, we're filming this video, we have to have, no, we can't do it in this angle. It has to be this one because the lighting is going to be bad. Headache. <laughs> then they're, they're good people in the internet are taking time out to watch us do stuff so I want to make it as good as possible um, so I really like this username in the fly box in the fly box yep like that one uh, hi Andy my questions are how do you become a guide and can you explain the pros and the cons of being a guide in the UK also some tips for someone thinking about becoming a guide okay so yeah I did see that question in there um, there is probably an entire 30 minute vlog just on that subject alone that's a it's a really broad subject uh if you guys would like to listen to me waffle for half an hour about how to do it and the pros and cons and the kind of experience going through it then let us know in the comment section i'm quite happy to do that so yeah i am a full-time fly fishing guide uh there aren't many of us in the uk and there's a reason for that um <laughs> There's not a massive culture of guided fishing in the UK compared to, say, some other countries. It isn't a destination fishery in the same way kind of 
New Zealand or Slovenia or Russia or, you know, you would have a guide when you go to those places nine times out of ten. Whereas that's perhaps not the case in the UK. Um, it's been hard, is, is the short answer. It's been really, really tough. Uh, to, to give you an idea, for the first two years that I'd set the business up, I had to tell my family at Christmas that they weren't getting presents off me that year because I had no money. I mean, that's why you're, you're compensating now yeah, with my yeah, Christmas presents yeah. this year. <laughs> um, so uh, how has it been? At, at times it's been really, really tough. At times I've questioned it. Actually, I'm going to be nice for a second. There was a point where I told IB that I thought I was going to give up after about 18 months. Um, and IB said, no, don't give up. Keep going. Give it another year and see what you can do. The reality is if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be doing this anymore. I remember that conversation very well. Like, it has been a rough ride. Like, it's not flowers and prettiness and like oh yeah i'm just gonna become a fishing guide and the clients are gonna start pouring it hasn't been anything it hasn't like that. been like that but I... you have accomplished and you have come so far in such a short amount of time and you have like clients who take us out for a meal and yeah. they're really really nice and clients who will send you a christmas card uh, like and they are coming four or five times a year they book you in like well, a year in advance yeah i guess that's the thing is that is that the, the, these people become friends yeah they're they're great people who who i love going fishing with their, their bookings that I, I get really excited about the the, the, re the reality of it is is that if you if you want to get into this um on top of all the different insurances and, and safety qualifications and stuff like that you're gonna have to have you're gonna need to accept that to start with it's not going to be full time for the yeah. first two years at least. You're, so you're, be broke. you're probably going to want another job on top of it that's flexible enough that you can work around your guiding. Um, you're probably going to want to have some savings because it, it'll drain you pretty quick if you know if you're going to have to buy a load of kit for clients to use if you're going to have a, a, a vehicle. Uh, access is one of the big problems in the UK, and I think that's why a lot of people struggle with it. Is you, access to places in the uk is different to new zealand or different to slovenia or different to uh america where you've got a lot of public water we just haven't got that here any water that's any good is under the ownership yeah. of someone who wants to charge you money to be there so my advice to anyone who's asked me that in the past is make sure you've got access to water if you haven't got access you've not got a business it's as simple as that but yeah we'll, we'll touch more on that if you guys want to hear more on that we'll touch more on that in another vlog because i think there's a, a whole big vlog just on that yeah just on that i would absolutely agree um random notes from a fishing s i think the well, name yeah, is they, too they're long random so I can't notes read it. Um, hi both one what's the trick for a successful youtube channel can i answer that consistency yeah good shout i've seen a lot of channels not just fishing like i will watch loads of you will know and andy will hate it because he will be putting fishing channels and i will be putting makeup channels on um it's consistency it's people who will upload videos for six months and then they will not upload for six months and then they will upload two videos and then it will not upload again if you want to be good at youtube you have to commit like yeah. this uh, as much as we want and we like doing youtube like it, it is a, a hard work like it's not easy you have to take so much stuff with you and it costs money like and it just bought a brand new camera again because something happened and the brand new camera that we had for a month ended up in the river well i was going to jump in there actually commitment in terms of time and effort money but also actually a bit of financial commitment by the so time you much. start if you want to make you know if you want to make really nice looking stuff um Modern cameras, you know, modern mobile phones actually are very good, and very a lot, good, a lot yeah. of our That's stuff is filmed on mobiles. Yeah, yeah. it's on mobile cameras. Um, but cameras to get different lenses, to do different stuff with. When you start talking about drones and stuff like that, yep. access to water, like stuff microphones, like that. tripods, yeah. everything costs money. Extra batteries, GoPros, like even fuel to go to yeah. a specific location, and more importantly, is time away from fishing. If you because changing the battery and re setting your gopro and putting a camera at a certain angle every all that all those little bits takes you away from actually fishing yeah actually i'll jump so. in there as well actually to give you an idea so i was at that place that a pike fish where i caught that little fish at the start of the video i'd been there for two and a half hours in, in terms yeah. of just actual time before i had to change the first gopro battery and the gopro batteries last for about an hour yeah so yeah so i've been fished. an hour and a half doing filming related stuff yeah. that wasn't fishing to give you an idea um I, I actually got asked by someone at a show once does filming the vlogs do you reckon filming the vlogs costs you any fish 
Yeah. God, definitely, because it takes so much time to get everything. So much time. I think for the style of fishing we do, if we, if perhaps we were a carp angler and we were sat stationary in a spot, maybe yeah, maybe then it wouldn't be quite so much of an issue. But as a as a mobile angler, having to put your cameras there and a tripod there and make sure everything's lined up every single time you get to a new spot. Yeah. It's pretty freaking hard work, so there's quite a lot going on. Even like the um, French leader videos that you did, the video is like half an hour and then 40 minutes or something yep. along those lines. It took us all day to film it. Yeah, yeah, there's there's literally eight hours worth Because you will have there. shots where you might have said something wrong and you need to redo it, or there might be a plane that flew past you and the sound is going to be bad, so you have to redo it again. Do you know, it's funny you say that, actually. On one of the waters that I fish regularly, there's a train track that goes right next yeah, to it. Constantly. The amount of times I'll be like, talking to the camera like, blah, 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 and just go... <laughs> behind us, like, you right, have to redo it again. I'll be doing that again then. <laughs> yeah, so it's a little bit of a, a bit, but sh short uh, answer to your first regular question uploads. is regular, regular uploads, definitely. Yeah. Um, second question, in the late 80s and early 90s, when I was a guide gilly and the only qualification was Stanic, uh, which only the gods had, no, <laughs> that's funny, nobody cared if you were a qualified instructor. Now every guide and Gilly seems to have qualification, but as these are qualifications in casting instruction, do you need one to be an effective guide? Thanks, Mark. That's a great question, Mark. Um, short answer, uh, I don't believe you do. So, um, yeah, you're absolutely right. In the 80s, Stanic was the big one, wasn't it? In terms of the casting qualifications as a guide, no, you don't. And actually, I haven't. I've been syllabus ready for the Triple F for nearly 10 years. I don't believe that a guide needs a casting instruction. Uh, sorry, a casting instructor's qualification. Uh, I think a casting instructor needs a casting qualification. And actually, I spoke to Pete Tijas, uh, another guy, actually recently retired guide, about this a couple of years ago. And I said that one of my big frustrations about the guiding scene in the UK is there isn't a guiding qualification in the UK. Yeah. I think there should be, because there's a lot of guides out there. Um, so, uh, casting qualification, no, I don't believe you do need it. What was the other question? What was the other part of the question? So, is there any qualification that you do need to have to be an effective guide? So, yeah, so, um, do you need a qualification to be an effective guide? Uh, but the more qualified you are, the more effective I think you'll be, uh, is, is, is long and short of it. But I was told by my public liability insurance company that just to get public liability insurance, and for goodness sake, folks, make sure if, you, if you're going out with the guy, make sure they've got public liability insurance, because if anything does go wrong, it, it's a nightmare without it. I was told that to get that insurance, I needed to have a government accredited qualification, which actually turned out in the UK to be the Anglin Trust uh, level one, level two, our government accredited qualifications. So they were the, as far as I was aware, or I'm aware, they are the ones that you need to be a accredited, a, a insured guide in the UK. Yep. Um, so, Harley Dixie, congratulations on the 5K. Thank you. My question is, do you have any concern about the future of angling in the UK? I ask this as a 21-year-old who has known very few anglers a similar age. Wow, that's a big question. It's a very big question, it, opening a can of worms kind yeah. of question. Yeah, that, that's probably another question that, that could... We were talking about the live streams. Yeah. That's a yeah. question that would probably have come up on those live streams, would, would be the future of angling. I mean, do you, do you want to jump in on that one? It frustrates me that there's a lot of people that constantly complain and moan how angling is going downhill, although, as I say, down the hill, um, and but they don't do anything. That's all it is, is they complain, 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 complain and complain. How many complaints do you have or nasty comments when you post something from open days when you will do coaching? People will still complain about something. They will always find to complain, like no matter what you're going to try and do to invite younger people to try and fishing and attract more people, there's still going to be people that will complain, but they're not doing anything to help it. That That is, that is for me, that is the frustration. is isn't necessarily that there is a problem, because there are other sports experiencing the same kind of problem. Golf, particularly shooting, is experiencing the same kind of problem. My real issue with this, and I, I could talk about this for hours, we have me talked too. about this for hours. <laughs> My real issue with this is the apathy from the industry. I have to be a bit careful here, because obviously I am surrounded Within, by the yeah. industry. But I think most of the guys who know me know about this. The apathy from the industry has frustrated me. There is plenty enough money floating around in fishing that the industry, I'm talking about the big companies, could be doing more than they are doing. And I'm not talking, you know, a couple of free bits of kit here and there. I'm talking about significant funding 
an investment in making sure that young people have access to fishing. Because I can tell you, through doing the coaching days, and we've coached kids down to like four or five years old, big range of ages up to 16, 17, 18, I've met a lot of kids who would love or have loved to go fishing, but I've never had the opportunity. Yeah, it's to not go that the fishing. kids don't want to go fishing. And we hide behind this, and this again, this this gets the hair on the back of my neck up. This does this excuse of oh, the kids just want to play on the Xbox. I have never met an eight-year-old child who isn't fascinated by fish. Who doesn't get excited when they do catch a fish? It I've doesn't even matter what fish it is. They can catch a slimy bream, and they're gonna be a lot like a lot more excited than I would. Yeah, but. I've met a lot of kids who haven't had the opportunity to do it. And the only way we can give them the opportunity is by investing in grassroots stuff, the local clubs, get some money and make sure there's qualified coaches and enough qualified coaches in every club that there are opportunities for kids. Actually, one of the things that I would like to suggest to the, to the Anglin Trust, uh, any of the clubs that want to qualify for a club mark qualification, which is kind of your peak level qualification for an Anglin club, there should be a certain percentage of the members who have to be coaches. Yeah. It's as simple as that. If, if you've got 6,000 members, then 60 of your members should be qualified coaches. And until you've got that level, you and don't get And there should be a mark. commitment as well. Like, but how many actual coaches do you see out there actually coaching? Actually doing it, yeah. And actually trying to invite people and teach people, even if it is catching a few small bream or roach. Like, it doesn't matter. It gets kids so excited and how many times, like, you had, after a few coaching, you had, like, repeat little yeah. kids come in. And then their parents get involved as well because they see how excited the kids are. So they need to learn because they want to take their kids on their own. They're asking you what kid they need to buy. Like, they want to fish. They just haven't been given an opportunity. See, I think my answer to that question is I am not worried about kids not wanting to get into fishing because I just don't believe that's a thing. I am massively worried about the funding that's going into making sure those opportunities are there. The industry's got to wake up here because it's strangling itself yeah. at the moment by not investing in the grassroots stuff, by not investing in clubs, by not making sure there's enough coaches. The industry is actually shutting itself off from its future market, particularly with fly fishing. I read somewhere the average age of your first time flying is 40. That is ludicrous. That just... It doesn't make any sense to me. It's bonkers. We've got to do more. There's got to be more funding for coaches. There's got to be more funding to get the kids in. This is this is going to have to be its own blog, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. That's a great honestly, question, though. That question gets us really riled That's up. That's my favourite question so far. And my least favourite. <laughs> <laughs> Chris McCafferty? Chris McCafferty, yeah. McCafferty. Uh, hi, you two. Uh, I'm an avid fly tyre. Uh, anyway, I live in and work in Germany and don't get to test my flies over here very often. Catch and release is not allowed, so I only get to fish private waters a couple of times a year plus five weeks in Scotland. My question is, do short shank hooks work any better at hooking fish or am I just imagining it? Do you want me to jump in on that one? Yeah. So, ahead. so no, I don't think you're imagining it. I don't think it's necessarily better at hooking fish. I think because the shank's shorter there's less of a lever to be able to pull the hook out. I found that in the old days when we used long shank hooks for streamers on the reservoirs and stuff, that big long shank just works as a lever. And obviously the more it's rotating, the more it's pulling on the hook hold. And yeah, eventually I think you lose more fish on long shank hooks. So these days, if I, well, when I am tying trout streamers for the rivers, I tend to tie them on uh, the little shanks. Uh, oh, God, crikey, I've forgotten the name of them. I'll put a link in the description. I might even put a picture here somewhere of what I'm talking about. There are these little articulated shanks that you can you can tie on and they can just put a little stinger hook at the back. A very sharp, short shank thing. It's much more effective. Yes, you will lose more fish with long shank hooks is the short answer. Can I just say that Andy was answering a question about hooks more passionately than if he was talking about me. <laughs> so there is that. Uh, there is a question from me. Who's better angler? Me or you? Obviously, we don't have to. Who asked? Just remind us who asked that question. Me. Yeah. Answers in the description. Com in the description. In the comments. We all know the answer to that. You don't have to comment. Um, Jason Coggins. I saw this question. Yeah. Would you rather be eat? Would you rather be eaten by maggots from the inside out or ants from the outside in? I'd go ants because the maggots would be really slow. If you had enough ants, I think your body would just like start to shut down. Whereas maggots would take ages. That'd be horrible. I would go maggots. You go maggots. I would definitely go maggots. Right, I'll get half a pint of reds. Cool, that's fine. Can I have the mixed colour? 
Uh, Manchester Angler, if you could only use one lure for the rest of your life, what would, would it be and why? I'm going to assume we're talking about pike. I'll tell you what, we'll do one for pike, one for perch. Yeah. Do you want to go first? Shad and shad. Yeah, shad and shad. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it wouldn't be far. For me, on the pike, it'd be a toss-up between the shad and the line through trout, which is still catching loads of fish. It's still kind of a shad. Yeah, well, just with the line shad and shad. Um, Codmaster Slammer Slammer. Codmaster Slammer. Good name. How will you please do a bream fishing video? No. No. <laughs> Codmaster Slammer again. Would you rather pike fish and catch five? Um, sixteen. I 16 read this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or go perch fishing and catch ten two pound. I I I take the pike. Personally. Five pike, 16 pound. Yeah, I'll take that. I would take the pike as Yeah, well. we're going pike on that one. You, yeah. if, if the perch was two and a half or three pounds, I might have had to think twice, but I'm taking the pike on that one. Ben Cord, would you recommend the Savage Gear XL and T3 trigger rod? And if you if you do, could you do a review on it? Please? Okay, so yeah. So this, I assume Ben's talking about the heavy rod that I've been doing the pike fishing with. I'd said I was going to do a review on that actually, and I didn't. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a lovely rod. And actually, I think it's underrated. I've cast 200 grams on that rod. Um, if yeah, if you guys want a review, we can do a review on that. No problem at all. Let us know in the comment section. Uh, Owen Moran, what got you both into fishing? Well, we kind of already the touched on that, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Alex Lewis. I ah, like, I is like, that Alex Lewis? I like Alex comments. Alex lives up the road. I fish with Alex. I'm really... Hi, Alex. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Alex. I always look forward to your comments. On fly fishing, people tend to ask me how to grayling nymph fish from the bank, given everyone their uh, days, I mean, um, I think he means these days, seems to learn um, check nymphing while wading. On pike lure fishing something on location, Yemas comments always appreciated. Ah, that, that's exactly why I like your comments. <laughs> Do you want to go for it? <sighs> you go for it, I will add. Okay, so in terms of the fishing from the bank, Alex fishes the Derbyshire Y, yeah. the same as we do, and it's slightly different then, we're not allowed to wade. Uh, now, I touched on this in the last video we filmed there with the indicators. It's a very, very hard place to check or French nymph because, because you can't get in the water because you've got no space behind you to lay down casts or anything. It's complicated. So I just find that, as Alex does, uh, using indicators, using buoyant indicators is pretty much the only way of fishing that place effectively. And pretty much every angler I see on there who, who catches a lot of fish does it with indicators. So, yeah, yeah if, you, if you can't wade... I find it really hard to see a better option than a buoyant indicator, to be honest. You couldn't French, um, use a French leader on there. Well, well the thing is, there are certain pools where you can. Yeah, but you can but take you'd like, three yeah, different exactly, rods. Exactly, exactly. So you end up taking three rods to effectively fish one pool. Yeah. Uh, and then on pike lure fishing something on location. Oh, crikey. Uh, well, you tell us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we uh, have no please idea. Please let us know. I can, I can tell you a lot of places where they aren't, if that's any help. <laughs> but I'm struggling to find them at the moment. Um, they're think, somewhere in the water. I think Derevent, River Derevent, if you're able to join the club there, um, loads of pike. But you could say that about any big river, though. Any, yeah, any true, bigger river. True. I mean, yeah, the you... reality is pike get everywhere. Like, uh, they get everywhere. Look for structure, look for snags, look for drop-offs, look for lilies, look for reeds. Anything that they can hide in and ambush around. If there's pike in that water, that's where you're most likely to find them, it's reality. Uh, Sir Beard of the Shire. Mm -hmm. Love the name. Other than fishing, what other hobbies do you pursue? Oh, well, this is a difficult one, isn't it? So, you pursue flight tying as well, don't you? Well, yeah, but I guess that kind of, yeah, it's kind of built in with it, isn't it? So do you, do you want to go first on this one? Or uh, I go first my on hobby one? has, it's a new hobby, isn't it, in the last year or so. Last year, this time, I made a New Year's resolution that I will go uh, start looking after myself and be a bit healthier. So I started going to the gym four days a week, religiously, and it's almost been a year because that was my New Year's resolution. And I've been going to the gym constantly, four or sometimes even more uh, days a week. You've been and smashing I think it, haven't you? That's been my kind of hobby now because I will spend quite a bit of time there every day. But apart from that, I don't really have any. Yeah, you haven't got any time. No, to no have like, any more I will literally leave the house six o'clock in the morning. I will get back around nine, and then by the time I need to go to sleep, shower, sleep, eat, say hi to you, yeah, in bed. Um, your hobby? Well, I, I, fishing. YouTube Fly is a hobby, isn't it? Filming fishing, editing fishing. Talking about fishing. Talking about fishing. 
uh, teaching people how to fish. Yeah. I guess I guess my my exit from fishing, if I need it for a couple of hours, is generally cricket. Yeah, you love a bit of cricket. Yeah, I love cricket. Used to play quite a lot, but I haven't got the time to do it anymore, unfortunately. But uh, if or I fitness. yeah, if I if I need to get out of fishing for an hour, I would generally just watch some watching cricket. I love watching cricket as well, just because the bar there is super cheap. <laughs> um, Ethan Rush. Yep. That's a great idea. What makes you want to film your fishing experiences and why do you fly and lower fish instead of coarse fish? Do you want to go? Oh, it's a very difficult question, really. Um, coarse fishing, for me, no offense to anyone else, is a little bit boring. Um, that, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, don't hit the unsubscribe button. <laughs> yeah, please. Don't please. <laughs> it's not In boring. Fairness, even then, sometimes it can be fun. Like, we had days in the summer where we were like, oh, we're just going to go to the pond with a can of sweet corns and a few maggots, and we're going to catch a few perch or um, tench. I was going to say, we're quite and lucky about here with tench like, venues, aren't we? Yeah. We really ought to film a tench vlog, actually, because we've got some quite nice waters. And it's going to be fun, and it's going to be relaxing. Uh, I don't know. There... But I, could, I couldn't do the carp fishing these days. Even, even dead baiting, I just think I might get bored. I can't sit still in one place for a long time. Like, even now, if you would see my, say, le my leg is moving, to shake. like, I can't, I can't sit still yeah, for a very long cause time. Yeah, because she finished the whole cup of coffee. <laughs> like, I, I need to be on the move. Otherwise, I get bored. So that's, that's because of that, really. Yeah? I guess in, in terms you of... You used to quarter fish. That's how you started yeah, fishing. Yeah, in, in, term, in fish. terms of the first part of the question, what makes us want to film it? Um, it's... I don't know. Well, I guess the, the idea was first so because we went fishing with a few friends and they all said it, it's really fun fishing with you guys. You ought to you ought to have a YouTube channel. It's purely because of me because I'm hilarious and is the boring one. But... Yeah, well, I'm the deadwood. You have the, you have the funny one. People just said fishing with you guys is fun. Quite fun, yeah. You ought to do something with this, and I was like, actually, well, I have got the time to do that. That would be fun, and it kind of just started from there. And had it have been in the first four or five vlogs. No one watched it, or people were like, well, that was rubbish, or stuff like that. We'd have probably just canned it, but actually, I think the the impetus to keep doing it has yeah, come yeah, from yeah. the fact that yeah, you guys are really nice and, and say like, nice stuff about yeah, All them. the comments were really nice and everything. Yeah, I think I kind so. of got addicted to nice comments, I think. But at the same time, we both like said, well, we have something unique that not many other YouTube channels have. Like, yeah. we're a couple, and we fish, and we love fishing, and we live fishing. Yeah, it's just Why not share it with nice the rest to of share people? it with yeah. people, isn't it? I agree with that. Uh, in terms of in terms of the course fishing, um, yeah, I'm I'm kind I'm kind of with our beats. I've always separated fishing out. And I think I've said this to you before. I've always separated separated fishing out into two different codes. You've got uh, hunting, which is going out and finding your fish. So for me, that that is lure fishing. You are actively going out and seeking fish. And fly fishing is the same. Particularly dry fly fishing, you are looking for a target. And then you've got the kind of uh, bait fishing aspect, which is more like trapping. You know, you, you're putting a bed of bait down and you're setting a trap for stuff to come in and they're coming and feed on it. And I've always been more of a hunter than a trapper is where I am with that. So it just, it just in the same way that uh, the, the trout fishing on spinners doesn't really do it for me, it's pretty much the same with this. I've got nothing against anyone who does do it. Absolutely fine, you crack on. But it just doesn't Not do it. You, it just so. doesn't do it for me, no. But when did you start in, um, stopping going to your like your local pond? Because I know that your Andy's mum always says that he spends more time there than in school. Yeah, so I think, do you know what? I think the reality is I probably stopped going once I learned to drive. Okay. Because I've, I've never had a fly fish issue within walking distance. Yeah, yeah, so, so you weren't able to yeah, get there unless someone... Once I learned to drive, all of a sudden I had more options available. And uh, to be honest, that was pretty much the game changer. Okay. But wasn't it as soon as you started to drive, you always literally went and lived and camped in New Zealand for a very long time. Well, yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. So New, New Zealand definitely changed things, but since I've had the opportunity to go and fish where I want, I haven't, yeah, I haven't really been back to the local waters. Cool, okay. Uh, Graham Bolton. Mm -hmm. What are your favourite type of lure for pike and why? Also, what is your PB pike and what did you catch it on? Well, I think we've answered all of those questions already, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, you got your pike on um, a, a fly. fly. Yeah. And my my was on spro... Uh, was it Gobi? It's not the Spro, it's the Strike Burke. The st strike, Strike Burke. Strike I'm a bloody Strike Burke. Uh, the Strike Pro. Strike Pro, yeah. Gobi? I think Gobi Junior. Go Gobi Junior, yeah, it's a great yeah. one, that is. With the curly tail, not the paddle yeah. tail. Fishing with Ash. Yep. What would be your dream fishing trip and why? I will answer that very quickly. I would love to go bonefish. 
somewhere see like I've never been like tropical sea fishing. We might be working on that so, as well, eh? We're trying to find an angle on that one. That would be really, really cool, and I would love to catch a golden fish. Like, my dreams aren't that big, really. <laughs> I'm just going to go, oh, I want to catch a golden fish. Well, I guess it's different, because I've had, cause I've had the opportunity to do this stuff already. I've, sure. I've kind of done a bit more. My Mine would be that golden dorado trip. I'd love to catch one of those. I'm things. just a peasant, so I'm fine with it. Although them. there is, there's a, there's a species of pike in, it only exists in like two or three valleys in Mongolia, called the Amur pike, and it's spotty. Okay. It's not like, it doesn't look like a normal pike, it's spotty. Other than that, it's exactly the same shape and it gets to about the same size. But it's such a unique looking fish. There's also in Mongolia, the Mongolian giant grayling. The big predatory, getting get massive. So I'd like to catch one. So actually, Mongolia might be my dream trip because I could tick a few off. There you go. Uh, winning ways. If... Just before. So winning ways is, is run by our good buddy Rich, who in fact has been on the channel and recently won the best YouTube channel yep. in the Anglin Science yeah. Awards. So congratulations to Rich, to Andy May, and, and to Jamie, Jamie Hughes, Hughes yep. for your good work on that one. Well done, guys. Oosh. Oosh. Uh, if humans can't see air, does that mean fish can't see water? But since we see water, does that mean fish can see air? See, I thought about this. Um, I don't think we can see water. I think we see the sediment that's being held in the water at that time. I think genuinely clear water is pretty much the same refractive index as air. So I think Rich needs to go away and think about what he's done there, to yeah, be Rich. honest. Have a think about it, mate, and come back to us. We've got a proper question. Colum Raniff. Ooh. Ooh. How did you get sponsored by Savage Gear? Ooh, crikey. Yeah, so that is its own kind of big, muddy... Uh, Complex, yeah, subject. the whole thing, the whole thing of sponsored anglers or content creators, as they really ought to be called, uh, is a real dark, nasty path to go down. And the reality is, again, that would probably be one of those live streams. Yeah, um, yeah, we'd I, love to do one on that one. That would be an interesting one. I can only talk about my experience of this and the reasons for me. Actually, mine is slightly different to most other anglers in the, uh, Savage Gear and Sierra on the fly fishing side of things. They kind of sponsor or back my business. So rather than being someone who is expected to go out and catch loads of big fish and give the photos and do that stuff. Because that uh, would not happen. A content wise not happening at the moment, that's for sure. Um, uh, they back my business and, uh, you know, the clients who fish with me, they get to use the kit and it's good exposure for that. And I've, I've become uh, more of an expert in the kit and stuff like that than just specifically having to go out and catch fish. So uh, how, basically, with the, I've been in the industry for quite a long time, worked in different tackle shops and stuff. When I started the business, I approached the guy who runs uh, the UK division of that company and said, this is what I'm up to. This is my plan. This is where I think it's going to go. Would you like to be involved? And fortunately, they said yes. And, and they have been and very good. since then, they've been absolutely amazing. I couldn't speak highly enough of the guys at Savage Gate and Sierra who have just looked after me completely. Um, anything that's gone wrong, they've sorted out. Yeah, they've been, they've really been great. Good. But yeah, my experience with sponsorship is a bit different to a lot of people's experience with sponsorship. Good uh, question. Though. Very good question. Tuck, uh, really enjoyed watching the recent fly tying videos. My question is, have you ever tried tying or using flies for perch pike fishing? What's the main difference between a perch fly and a trout grayling fly? Okay, so uh, Tuck, thank you very much uh, for the kind words. Uh, well, yeah, as we were discussed, my PB pike was on fly. Um, Did you tie it yourself? No. Huh. <laughs> it was a it was a tube. I wasn't tying tubes at that point. Uh, well, I guess the main difference is is what you're imitating. Uh, you know, trout and grayling are mostly in uh, insects. insects, bugs. Uh, so you know that shape and size is is relevant. Well, trout, we use streamers for trout. You imitate small bait fish, but when you're talking pike and perch, you're talking about bigger imitations of fish mostly uh perch you use little crayfish or something like that but mostly you're talking about bigger imitations for uh pike particularly they would be fish imitations and the, the the kit needs to be heavier so where we're using two three four weights for the trout and the grayling we'd be using eight nine ten weight outfits for the pikes right, it's yeah. its own little kind of subculture at the moment pike fly fishing it's got really it's popular. a lot of fun it's a it's lot great of fun. fun your shoulder does get a lot to, it's something we need tired. to we've been asked a lot actually well we have tried vlog. filming it um we didn't catch anything i caught that one yeah when we were bad trout that big trout but that was it we oh didn't. do you know i reckon once the rivers thin out here we could film on some of the rivers the space the rivers, yeah, yeah i think yeah keep yeah, your eyes peeled on that one i think we're going to try and do that because we both enjoy fly fishing for pike like it's really cool yeah um, I only caught my first pike on the flight, what, two years ago? At the, first, we went, at the first attempt. At the first attempt. I think it was my second cast. Yep. First cast I got the follow, second cast I got the fish, so it was fairly easy. 
Uh, no complaints well, there. I've, I've always said, I'm just going to jump in quick, I've always said there that if we could cast flies, as far as we can cast lures, no one would use lures. Because I honestly believe that flies are more effective because of the because weightlessness of the and because of the movement. Yeah, it's much easier. Pike can inhale in predator. I mean, you know, they're not gnashing like that. They, they, if you watch them take something, they generally suck it into the but back of their mouth. People have started using like jig flies as well. Jig now flies is getting there now. Kit. Absolutely, yeah. And but, I think that's the reason because the flies is a bit more, a bit more mobile. But having that weightlessness means that they, when they go to inhale it, rather than there being two hundred grams of weight to inhale, which would feel weird. It just goes straight to the back of their mouth and you don't miss those takes. So I think that's why fly fishing for them can often lead to just as many fish. I will say though, I thought there's a question for you. So you know how with a pike fly, when you're retrieving and you get a take, you can't strike, which I did the first time, that's why I missed the fish. You just strip to set the hook in. Yeah, 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 do I'll explain that in a second. Do you yeah. do the same on when you're using jug flies on the spinning kit? But obviously you can't, do you just whine or do you actually strike as well? Oh, okay. So what Ivy is talking about there is that we try and avoid doing the traditional trout strike like that when you're setting a hook into pikes. They've got very hard bony mouths and the hooks are a heavier wire. So rather than lifting and striking, you try and just strip the line to set the hook. And there's much more power, much more torque going through the hook if you do that. Fly rods are quite bendy. The reason why you might not do that with a jig fly is because you're using it on a spinning rod. And spinning rods generally are stiffer. stiffer. Yeah. So I think, yeah, you could still... You could uh, still strike. Yeah, absolutely. I will say most of my strikes with spinning kit these days combines both lifting and winding. Okay. I generally do both at the same time. But I that, don't have that problem because I don't catch anything when I'm well, spinning. Well, it's not so. been a great issue for me recently, has it? <laughs> <laughs> um, Nick Trotman, how, uh, how does the man who drives the snowplow get to work? Only joking. You really need to do more predator fishing, pike, perch, and zander, maybe using flies, although I do enjoy the trout grailing films. Yeah, well, I think we've just touched on that one. On it. So, so to give some kind of context to this, uh, I've now tried to film 10 lure fishing vlogs and come away with basically nothing other than the tiny little bit of footage you saw at the start. It's just been soul destroying, to be quite mm -hmm. honest. I've come back, I've, I've, been, I've said to her, I've come back and I'm never doing that again. I've just, I can't. But I really want to. I really want to get my mojo back. I'm just in a real bad funk at the moment. I don't think anyone in the UK is having a great time, is it? You know, you generally, you get a feel for it on social Probably media. apart from Robbie. Well, apart, well, actually, even Robbie's been pretty quiet recently. You get a feel for it on social media, though, don't you? You open it up on a Saturday evening and there's pictures and pictures and pictures. It hasn't been like that recently. Yeah. People haven't been catching as many fish because so, of the conditions. We had so much rain, so much rain, especially in the Midlands here. Like Stick with us. Not stopping. As soon as it picks up, I'll be there. And I've got plans to do plenty more lure fishing. Yep. So, yeah, it's happening. Stick with us, Nick. Thank you for the question. Uh, Gavstar12345 just said, I'm just here for you, Emma. Me too. Thank you very much. Fair, fair, <laughs> fair comment. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, Joe Dawson, love watching you guys catch fish, but my question is, how often do you blank and how do you approach those tough days uh, when the fish just aren't cooperating? Thanks. Usually for me, it's with a glass of Prosecco. Well, how often do I blank? I think I've nearly covered that in the last answer yeah. quite a lot recently. Uh, yeah. Actually, we definitely catch more fish fly fishing. Fly fishing, yeah, absolutely. We definitely catch more fish. But then again, when you're going out lure fishing, you are kind of accepting that you're fishing for fewer fish, but they're, they're going to be bigger. We haven't done a, like a wasp fishing vlog in ages. No. A little perch fishing rod, um, but particularly with the pike fishing, if you can get three or four fish on lures in a day at this time of year, you've had a really good day. Uh, that hasn't happened for us yet, but you kind of accept that that's going to be the case. Whereas with the fly fishing, we know we're going to catch a few more fish because uh, uh, we know they're there. They're smaller fish. They're generally they're they're pretty predictable. Whereas the pike and the perch haven't been recently. How do we how do I approach those days? Just keep grinding. That's all you can do is just keep throwing that lure in that's all you can do try and change as much as possible if something hasn't worked change it and change it and change it i think the worst thing you can do on those days is get lazy and just keep casting the same lure over and over again try and do something different but the reality is that they are the days that separate your anglers out from your fishermen and if, if you're really into this if you really really want to be good at this you're gonna have to grind through those days and just keep fishing fishing slovenia are you guys coming to slovenia for a hucho well, it was planned, wasn't it? Unfortunately, the rain wasn't just in the UK. They've had it really, really bad in Slovenia as well. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen now. I, I just can't. I can't see it in no, the No, because year. we planned to do it for Christmas, didn't yeah. we? And then it just didn't... just hasn't worked out. Uh, Hopefully po soon. Possibly next winter. We might have a yeah. look at that one. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty fun. I would love to catch a hoochin. 
it's the only Trevenia species I'm caught. So yeah, oh yeah, yes is the answer. We're just not sure when. Uh, Matt Waldridge, uh, does the weather determine what species you fish for? Would strong winds make you fish heavier lures? And also, would you consider a dead bait session? Thanks, guys. Um, so the weather, usually for me, it does determine, because like I said, if I only get to fish on the weekend, if it's raining, most of the time, uh, that means the rivers are rising, so we will avoid trout or grayling fishing, so we will go and do some spinning for pike or perch somewhere on still waters. Yeah. So for me, it, it, it does. If it's just the light rain, we're still going to go fly fishing i think well i think i think i think we need to we need to separate out the, the fishing from the vlog in there if it, if there's any rain in the air it's almost impossible to vlog okay, yeah. because obviously we've got expensive camera kit and drones microphones and mobile and phones like and microphones find. this is one of the big issues is that once it starts raining the vlogging has to stop it's as simple as that i just I, you know we can't afford to keep replacing this kit over and over so we have to protect it so if it's raining we ain't vlogging yeah is the reality would strong winds make you fish heavier lures? No, not necessarily. Nope. Not necessarily, no. I might just a uh, different cast and angle. And, and there's a big difference here between heavy and aerodynamic. I would perhaps look at chucking something that's a little bit more aerodynamic. The jerk, jerk baits, actually. Yeah. Jerk baits like the Freestyler, uh, the Salmo Slider. Yeah. Cast a freaking mile. So if you want to cover lots of water in a strong wind, go for something uh, fairly compact uh, and streamlined. Uh, I find that tail baits... If you cast the tailbait into a wind, it's hopeless. It's it just hopeless, it just yeah. blows back yeah. past you. So, to be fair, I, I find like um, a spinnerbait, like the bush, wind or no wind. Yeah, again, because it's nice and streamlined, yeah. isn't it? There's no great bulk there to stop it. Uh, would you consider a dead bait session? We have been talking yes, about we that. We just need to borrow some kit, fishing kit, because we don't have any. So as long as we can Do you know find... What? I've even thought about that. We might not need to borrow some kit. I'm working on that. Okay, yeah. cool. And just coming up with the idea, so stay tuned for that. Because I've never fished on dead bait, so I would want to try that. Uh, David Devine. David Devine, yeah. Um, this, oh, I don't know. Is it frustrating making content while uh, being sponsored by the likes of Savage Gear, which are good, but there's other great lures and products out there? Always wondered that. Very good question, David. Yeah, it's a great question. Do you want to go first on that or shall I? You go first. I'm not sponsored. You go <laughs> Well, okay. So I, I have a really good relationship with Savage Gear and they understand that we can't just use the same lures over and over again. And where possible, we've been pretty open with this, that we've used different lures. We've talked about different lures already in this. Yeah. We've talked about different lures in the last minute. We don't, I don't think Savage Gear expects anyone in the world to just use Savage Gear lures and just have Savage Gear lures in the box. Would be impossible then to know what's good, what's bad. If exactly. If you're only using one brand. Part of, part of our role as consultants or whatever you want to call it is to be able to feed back to the design guys what is and isn't working and what's good and not good. And my feeling has always been, if you're not using a few other lures from other brands, how do you know what's good and what's yeah. not good? How can you get different ideas? So in terms of uh, role as a sponsored angler, I think it's quite important that you use other brands' lures sometimes, just so you get a feel for what is out there and you know what, what could work and what could do differently. In terms of the vlogs, again, we use mostly Savage Gear lures because that's the that's lures we we've have. got. Yeah, that's what's available. Like, it would be silly for us to go and spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds for something that essentially we already have. Yeah, um, but there are lures. We talked about this in both our favourite uh, pike lures and perch lures that aren't Savage Gear that we absolutely love. We talked about your Stripe Pro Guppy Junior. Yeah, that's a great yeah. lure. The Rakishad's like Rakishad, such an impressive brilliant. bait. Brilliant. Salmo Slider, great yeah. lure. Yeah. Mep Spinners, absolute classic. Fox, uh, little uh, Fox Rage, what's the, the spiky little, one? Spiky oh, yeah, the Spiky Shad, yeah, great lure. So mm. we're not afraid to use other brands' lures. If, it. if it looks like we're using mostly Savage Gear lures, it's because we own mostly Savage yeah. Gear lures. Yeah, have loads. So uh, there was a name that I can't say the second word. The first one is family. The other one, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say because I might get demonetized. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 family. Uh, hi, family. Family, hi. Uh, how did you two meet and eventually start fishing together? Also, when do you do your next bike fishing? Can you do a challenge, please? Okay. Oh, I think people do like challenges. Yeah. I don't like challenges because Andy's a lot better than I am, so I always end that's up not losing. What, well, that's not the, what the results of the challenges say. <sighs> I always end up losing if it's lure fishing. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's, I, yeah. I don't like losing. Okay, well, we'll work on that. Uh, how do we meet? Do you want to tell the story or shall I? You tell the well, story. Well, no, I'm not going to tell the whole story because <laughs> it takes freaking ages. We're, it's a very 21st century relationship <laughs> meeting. Uh, we met through Facebook, through commenting on some other stuff at the same time. And it turned out we don't hate each other. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. 
Yeah, we're not going to go into more details about that. <laughs> Um, Peter Smith, hi, what would you say are the best three go to dry flies, wet flies and nymphs from a uh, wild brown trout in Yorkshire area? Very new to fly fishing and no real idea if there's a fly or two that are favorite uh, for wild browns. Okay. Do me... Good question, Peter. Do you want me to do that one? I have never even been to Yorkshire. Okay, well, I haven't done a huge amount of fishing in Yorkshire. What I will say is, and I, I think we've talked about this on a couple of vlogs, Wherever you go, basically, in the world, but particularly in the UK, trout fishing, there are going to be two predominant species of insect that you're going to find in the river. You are going to have um, your trichopter, which is your caddis, your sedges. Uh, every river will have those. And you'll have uh, your umbrella term for olives, your upwinged insects, so blue-winged olives, iron blue duns, march browns, and stuff like that. So if I could only carry three dry flies anywhere in the country, really, I would have a CDC emerger, probably a quill body, and that could be anywhere from a size 12 to size 20. I would have a CDC done. I'm actually going to do a, a fly time video on one of those when we get a bit near towards the trout season. In fact, I'll probably do one on each of these. I'd have some kind of CDC done on an olive. Uh, again, it could be anywhere from size 12 to size 20. And I'd have a spinner on an olive. And again, that could be anywhere from a size 12 to a size 20, and that would pretty much cover all your bases. Um, nymphs, uh, you would want a something a bit hairs easy would always work. Uh, a red tag. Yeah, some kind of pheasant tail, and yeah, actually, yeah, I'd agree with that. A red tag as your kind of uh, slightly brighter option fly. Probably each of those nymphs might have a little flash of colour in them. Uh, but what I will say, actually, is, is that more than specific patterns, I would say don't get too hung up about it. As long as you've got a kind of generic selection of different sizes of the insects that I've just talked about. Don't use too many flies. I actually think sometimes first time clients with me are a little bit shocked or a little bit disappointed about how few flies I bring with me. Uh, sorry. Oh, it's the back Can I just box. interrupt you? That's my stock Clients box. are disappointed. Uh, actually, that's pretty empty at the moment. Clients are disappointed, yeah. That's one side. That's just nymphs. And that's usually full. Clients are disappointed. Can we talk about this? So You have a problem if you think that's disappointing. So most clients wouldn't see that box. I'll throw that out there straight away. Um, I actually, I just I carry a, a tacky day box, which is just over 100 flies. And that's all I take with me. If you're carrying more than 100 flies with you on a day's fishing, you're probably overcomplicating it, particularly if you're someone who's fairly new to it. So some hares ears and some pheasant tails and, I don't know, a, a check nymph a selection of check nymphs as the nymphs and a selection of different olives and caddis from size 12 to 20 and that's pretty much your entire season covered there'll be some seasonal stuff your mayflies you join may you want some mayflies then you'll have uh, hawthorns we get quite a lot of hawthorns around here so uh, you know they're a terrestrial that fall onto the water and in some parts of the country the daddy long legs in the summer and autumn works really well but we really are talking there if you had eight different types of fly, eight different patterns of fly in four or five sizes, you're not going to miss out on much. So don't overthink it too much with my advice. Don't go too heavy on flies. Uh, I think we have only one last question. Last which is not question. question. Um, it's just a comment from David Smith. It says, just keep doing your videos. You have both uh, taught me so much. Keep up the great work. Well, that's super kind, David. Thank you very much. And possibly a good place to finish this vlog on. I have a question for you. For me? Yes. Oh, wow. Uh, what have you bought me for Christmas? Uh, we'll find out on Christmas Day. Maybe they're just empty boxes. Maybe they are just empty boxes. Empty promises. <laughs> That's what this It's a Christmas full of empty promises. Well, right. We will wrap this up. 5,000 subscribers. Who would have thought? I know, right? It's Definitely incredible, isn't it? Definitely not us. <laughs> we've, got, we've got more subscribers than your average, like... Very small football team. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty freaking cool. So thank you very much for everyone who takes time out of their day to watch it, to comment, to like it. We really do genuinely appreciate it. Yeah, and on that note, all we need to say is thank you very much again for watching this vlog. Really appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you very much for keeping in touch with us in the comment section for the whole time. It really does keep us going. We love that comment section. And most of all, we need to say a very Merry Christmas. To everyone who's just watched this video, I hope you're having a great time, full of seasons, cheer and greetings and probably a lot of wine. We have a week off now, 
So we're going to try and film as much videos yep. out for you as possible, including some lure fishing. So keep stu keep stay tuned for that. And hopefully we will see you very, very soon. Thank you very much, guys. Take care, folks. Bye. Bye-bye.